Hi everyone, let's talk about curating and organizing our business information. One of the most effective things that I have found is to use SharePoint web pages. With some standard out of the box web parts, you can create visually appealing pages that are easy for your end users to navigate. To help you get started, I'm going to create a security page for a fake company today. So let's jump right in. The first thing you will need to do is go to your SharePoint site and in the upper left hand corner, click the drop down for new. Anyone with the role of site administrator or site owner can create a new page by clicking on the page option. A page will open that allows you to choose a template for your new web page. The choices are blank, visual, and basic text. You may see user-created templates or ones that your admin have made available to you. In this example, I'm just gonna go with a blank template. And then I'm gonna navigate to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and select Create Page. The blank template automatically comes with two sections, a title section at the top and a blank section with a text web part. First, we're going to look at the title section. There are a few different layout options you can use for your title section. Most include images. The default is overlap. If you want to remove the image, you can select plain and then you will just see the text for the title. You can also use a color block or you can use my favorite, which is image in title. I'm going to give this page a name and keep in mind anything you type here will become part of the URL. So what I like to do is give it a shortened name up front so that the URL isn't too long. Once the URL is generated, you can go back to the title section and change it without impacting the URL. Next, we're going to add an image to the title block. To do that, go to the toolbar in the upper left-hand corner of the title section and click on the second icon over, which will allow us to browse images. There are multiple ways that you can find images, such as using stock images that are included with the Microsoft license. You can upload from a link, you can upload from your computer, or you can do a web search. Now I happen to have an image that I want to use on my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and then go to the bottom right-hand corner and select Add Image. One tip to share is that the ideal pixel ratio for a banner image is 1900 by 200. If you use a larger square image, it may become distorted when placed in this title section. It can be a bit difficult using free stock images to find one that fits well in the title section. Another option is to use software such as Canva to create a custom banner, which is what I did for the one you're seeing here. Now that we have our title done, it's time to start adding content in the sections of the web page. Now earlier I told you that we have one section already with a text web part. We're gonna need more than that for our security page. You can add additional sections by going to the left hand side of the screen and clicking on one of the plus signs. This will add a new section either above or below the existing one depending on which plus sign you click. When you do that, you will see different section options such as one column, one third left or right, or vertical sections. While there's no wrong answer to which one you choose, I have found that if I use a couple different ones, it adds a little bit of visual interest to the page. So to start, I'm going to choose the vertical section that adds a column to the right side of the page. Now we're gonna go back to the left side of the screen and click the plus sign to insert a new section above our text block section. And this time I'm going to choose one column. So the insert web part option is a little bit hidden. So what you need to do is hover your mouse over the top center of your section and then you'll see this little gray circle with the plus sign in it. That's to add a new web part. Click on this to see the available options and in this example, I am going to use the search box to find the hero web part. When designing a web page, you want to put your most important information at the top. The hero web part is useful because it gives you up to five tiles to insert links to pages, documents, and videos. I'm gonna start by linking through to a security procedure page. This is where we're going to choose what to put in the hero web part. 
In this example, I've recently created a web page called Security Office, and it's in the center of the page at the bottom. So I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner and select Insert. In the Hero web part, there will always be a thumbnail image. SharePoint is going to select the first image it can find related to the link you provided. However, I want an image that clearly brings to mind security, so I'm going to change out the thumbnail. On the bottom right side of the tile, you see an edit pencil. This will let you make changes to just this one tile. A pane opened up on the right and you can see a few options to customize this Hero tile. In this example, I want to select the background image dropdown. The auto select image radio button is currently selected. We're going to choose custom image. Then we're going to click on change and this will allow you to choose your image from wherever you happen to have saved it. In my case, mine is on my computer, so I will click upload and then choose my image. Then go to the bottom right hand corner and select add image. Now I'm gonna put the video on fast forward so we can rinse and repeat and fill out the entire hero web part so that you can get an idea of what it looks like when it's completed. Now that I've inserted all five tiles, they don't have to stay in this order. You can choose to move them around by hovering over a specific tile and then drag and dropping it into a different location within the hero web part. As we continue to build out this page, I will show some of the most commonly used web parts. Let's start by adding a countdown timer to the right column section. Hover your mouse over the center of the section to click the little plus sign and then we can go ahead and search for countdown timer. When this web part is added, by default, it automatically starts a 24 hour countdown. So we're gonna customize this web part a little bit by first adding a title. Then we're going to look to the properties pane on the right hand side of the screen. At the top, you see the option to change the date and time. The first box is for date, so I will click on the calendar icon and my next event will be in December on the second Monday, which happens to be the 11th. In the second box, I need to change the time, so I will click the drop down, and my event is going to start at 10 a.m. Now you can see that the countdown has switched to 15 days. The next option you have is to toggle on a call to action, which adds an additional button. There are many ways to use the call to action, but in this case, I'm directing people to a link that has some additional information that they need before they come to the briefing. Next, I'm going to add a background image because I feel like it adds a little more visual interest to the page. This time, I'm going to choose a stock image and just type in the word meeting. Here, I find one that seems to fit my theme very well, and then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click insert. Now you will see that there is a picture behind my countdown timer. You can customize this a little more by changing the overlay color. The default is black, but you can switch it to white. I personally prefer the black overlay because I feel like the information contained in the box stands out better. You can also change the overlay opacity and make it darker or lighter. Now again, I tend to go towards a darker overlay to make the letters stand out. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a description to this countdown timer. I, as the creator of this page, know that I'm counting down to December 11th, but the readers of the page may not know that. So I will use the description field to add that additional context and say that the new arrival security brief is on December 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Now this web part is an example of one that needs a little bit of maintenance because once December 11th at 10 a.m. comes, the countdown will set to zero. 
So then you would want to go in and select a new date and time to count down to a different event. The next thing we're going to do is add the people web part to the right hand column. Now this one is particularly useful when your users need to know who to contact about a specific topic. In this example, who to contact when you have security questions. So I'm gonna give the web part a name and then all I have to do is type a name or email address into the field and this will search the global address list for a valid user. You do have the option to use a small, medium, or large layout, but I have found that the small layout works best in the vertical column. Once the page is published, anyone who comes to the page can click on the individual names and see the contact information that is contained in the global address list. Another flexible and frequently used web part is quick links. It's kind of like the hero web part where you can add documents, videos, and links to a page, but it doesn't have the same five tile layout. This means that you can have as many links as you need. To add content, all you need to do is click add a link, and then you can provide a URL or upload a video or document from your computer, website, OneDrive, etc. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just gonna simply put google.com so that we can have a link in the web part. Then from the properties pane on the right-hand side, you can see that I can change the title. For example, a big security theme is see something, say something. And then this time I'm going to use an icon since there's no auto-selected image to use other than this picture of a globe. When I select the appropriate radio button, I see this little change option at the bottom. And then from here, you see a library of icons available in SharePoint. This is a security page, so I'm just gonna type in security and see what I get. I kind of like this little security camera, so I'm gonna select that. And now I have something that visually distinguishes one link from the other beyond the title. As I hope you're starting to notice, the steps to add links to various web parts is very similar. So now we're gonna switch our focus to the center of the screen and start adding some text to that text web part that was automatically added with our blank template at the beginning of the video. Now I have already created some sample text that I'm just gonna copy and paste here so you don't have to watch me type. What I would like to point out is when you're in the text web part, there is a formatting toolbar at the top that lets you do some basic things like change the type of text, whether it be normal or a header, change the font, use bold, etc. Now in this example, I'm using this first text box to describe the overall concept of what this page is for. I do want to add some additional text to the page, so I'm going to add a new section. As a design note, I have found that alternating text and images can keep visual interest on a page, and it makes it easier for people to scan versus having to read large chunks of text. That's why I chose the one-third right layout for this section. In the two-thirds part of the section, I am going to add in the text web part. And then once again, I'm just going to paste in some text. Now I'm going to add an image web part. This is going to do nothing more than show a picture on the page, which I will select from my computer and then click add image. In the one third web part, I found that a 500 by 500 pixel ratio works well for these images. I'm gonna add one more section so that we can look at another commonly used web part, and that is to embed videos on a page. Now, when you click the plus sign for add web part, you're going to see different options for video. Some common choices are highlighted content, quick links, or the stream web part. I'm gonna select the stream web part because this one only looks for videos on your SharePoint site. By default, it's going to pull in all videos from your SharePoint site. I'm gonna put this in a grid view because I think it looks nicer. And then we're gonna to go to the properties pane on the right and under source, we're going to select folder. Now I personally organize all of my videos in folders just so that I can add them to SharePoint pages. I don't happen to have any security videos, so I'm just gonna select stream as the example. And now you see that there are only two videos instead of all of the ones on the SharePoint site. Another thing I'd like to draw your attention to in the properties pane is 
how many videos will show at a time. The default is six, but you can bump it up to 30. The reason I point this out is a lot of people come to me wanting to know why some of their videos have disappeared or are not showing. And it's usually because it's still set to six and they've got 10 or 15 videos. As another tip for you, if you have more than 30 videos, please consider using the highlighted content web part, which will allow you to add up to 500 videos. This page now has all of the common elements that I wanted to demonstrate. And the last thing we need to do is go into the toolbar towards the top right side of the screen and click publish. If you need to change anything on the page, go back up to the right hand side and now you will see an edit button. Again, you must be an owner or an admin to click this button. And then for example, let's say we need to change the new arrival security brief to January. You would select the web part, click the edit pencil, and then select a new date and time. To address a common question, editing a web part on a SharePoint page is really not that much different than creating a new web part because the properties pane on the right hand side has the exact same content and choices. Now all I need to do is republish and we have successfully created and edited a SharePoint page together.